This week, we're talking about a little girl haunted by space demons. Going along the line of adventure comics with Homestuck, I want to bring up to your attention Ava's Demon. Ava's Demon is created by Michelle Kazlowski. Kazl... Kazkowski. Kazkowski. Michelle began the webcomic in 2012 following Ava, a little girl with this ghost or demon that has been following her for her entire life. She's an orphan at one of the main colonies owned by the corporation slash religion named Titan. When her colony is attacked, she gangs up with Odin, a fellow classmate she has never met before, and they begin their adventure. I recommend this comic starting with its great art style. In the artist's words, it's like watching a movie script on the, your screen. It is wonderfully painted and you can see her artistic experience in every single frame. This is a adventure format comic. Now I'll be going into this a little bit later. It's a point worth noting. Ava's Demon has a pretty excellent archive with currently on its 17th chapter with a print volume and another on the way. Michelle currently has a spotty update schedule with in 2016 currently two updates. Be wary since you will probably reach the end before you get a conclusion. Doing a little bit of research and contacts with her Twitter and her blog posts, she does have a lot of real life events that have barred her from keeping up with the comic. So I can find that pretty excusable in terms of update schedule. But that's not the reason why I want to talk about this. Michelle has interned at Pixar, worked at DreamWorks, and has a lot of oh, so much artistic experience. It really comes out in her comic. Before I go on to a spiel slash tangent about her art style, let's go into the adventure format comic. Like for example, you have the buttons at the bottom of the webcomic. You can go to the first page, the previous page, the next page, or the latest page. And sometimes in the middle, you'll get either a random button or maybe the archive. If you have no need for continuity in your comic, like a gag a day strip, you would have a random button. Or if you need to go back and reread a another story arc to understand this one, or if you want to skip a story arc entirely, an archive button would fit better. It seems to be the standard of web comics where you will find these buttons one way or another on a page. It's understandable for practical reasons. It's like a comic book. You get to go backwards or forwards and skip to somewhere in between. But the adventure format is different. You only have one button. You can only go forward. It is not like a story in a comic book where you get to follow the page by page, maybe going back if you didn't get something. It puts more investment into going forwards. If you want to go backwards, you have to click more buttons than just the one that's present on the screen. The adventure style format usually follows a second person narrative where you, the reader, act as the main character in a certain sense. That you are acting through this adventure. This adventure style format is quite experimental compared to what's traditional, whereas you have the different panels on the page. Instead, you have it frame by frame by frame, and you have to click to move forward. The adventure style format I have found tend to drive a lot of hypermedia ideas. These comics have videos and go beyond this boundary that they've set for themselves. Web comics can change their format than what is available traditionally. So the idea that you can have so many different formats for a single genre is pretty damn neat. So please go on an adventure and check out Ava's Demon. And next time, we'll talk about a web comic about kids at school who make bad decisions. Please click here to see Homestuck and click here to subscribe. And until next time.